what is the percentage of me being spoiled for Spider-Man No Way Home? I swear to God, if I see, if I recognize anything while watching No Way Home, not only I basically, I just like, oh my God, I basically just spoiled No Way Home for me. I will literally put dirt in my eye. I will accept defeat that I have been spoiled for Spider-Man No Way Home! Oh, well, I'm back to another Spider-Man review. And also, if you hear noise in the background, that would be my brothers, you know, just doing their things. I'd be doing this on the desk, but, uh, I'm just doing, I'm just gonna do it in their messy bedroom. And also, don't worry, I'll be sure to give everyone a tour of where we're staying at currently, because I'll tell you this, it ain't a house, but a hotel room. But I'll tell you, this is a, it's a nice hotel room. But anyway, so yeah, this is gonna be my movie review for The Amazing Spider-Man, since sadly, there isn't no Spy there's no Spider-Man 4. If you've seen my Spider, if you see my Spider-Man Three review, I've already gave details of, you know, telling you all that Spider-Man Four was canceled. But anyways, enough chit chat. It's time that we talk about TASM, which stands for the Amazing Spider-Man. In case you didn't know what that meant, but it's way easier for me to say it, honestly. Anyways, let's get started. When I found out that they were making another Spider-Man movie, I had questions like, "What the heck happened to Toby? And what was this? Like, I I I was so confused back then. I I just didn't know what was going on, but." It would make sense for why I'd be confused back then, because, I mean, I, I was a kid at this time. I was not aware that Spider-Man 4 was cancelled, or that they were rebooting Spider-Man. Like, I wasn't aware of this. Because, I was... Okay, it'd be 2012, so how old would I be? Six years old, holy crap. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be aware of what, what would have been happening at that time. But, either way, I was happy to see another Spider-Man movie, because, of course, I'm a sucker for Spider-Man. One I probably most likely saw on DVD, whether I saw it for the first time at home or in theaters. I mean, I remember seeing The Avengers in theaters with my grandparents back in 2012, because that's when The Amazing Spider-Man had came out. But yeah, basically, I have no memory of ever seeing TASM in theaters, sadly. So sadly, I can barely remember much for what was my experience for The Amazing Spider-Man, but I'm gonna try my best to remember how I felt about this movie back then. So our new Peter Parker is played by Andrew Garfield, who I'll say is probably one of my most favorite actors, mainly because of Spider-Man, but the reason why I like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man is because he's passionate about it. Like, I, there's a clip of him in a Spider-Man costume at, I guess, Comic-Con, and he's just, like, he's just so passionate about it. And that's the reason why I like about Andrew Garfield being Spider-Man, because he's so passionate about it, and that he badly wanted to play Spider-Man, and he got the part! And I'm hoping we get to see him in Spider-Man Only Home. Like, I legitimately feel bad for Andrew Garfield because everyone keeps asking him if he's if he's if he's in Spider-Man No Way Home like okay can we I know how badly we want to know if he's in the movie or not but can we all just give him a break just get off his back please because like can we all just maybe leave Andrew alone let him be because whether I, we totally know he's in the movie whether we believe it or not because like just give Andrew some space I think he's a bit stressed out getting asked about this and like oh I want to tell you guys so bad but I have to keep a secret or else Kevin Feige will snipe me Still, I feel bad for Andrew, man. But I did like them a lot more than Tommy McGuire. No offense or disrespect. Toby was my childhood and will always be my childhood, Spider-Man. But what are my thoughts on the new love interest, Gwen Stacy? Now, I was probably like, who the heck is she? Where's MJ? Like I said earlier, I had questions about what the heck was going on or what was the amazing Spider-Man as a kid. But I didn't like the new interest. Also, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Actually, a couple of things I forgot to mention for Spider-Man 3. So... Quick pause on Taz, um, and three, two, one. So yeah, uh, here are my quick thoughts for Spider-Man 3. Uh, one, Gwen Stacy did not need to be introduced in Spider-Man 3. But hey, at least we have a Gwen Stacy in Sam Raimi's universe. But seriously, though, how the heck did she end up going out with, um, Eddie Brock? But like, not that I, no, not that I didn't like Gwen Stacy. She was a likable character in the movie, but she did not need to be introduced. So, mainly because... No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not down for the love triangle with Peter, MJ, and Gwen, but she, was, she wasn't dislikable in the movie, but still, no on the, no on the love triangle, though. And the butler. Seriously, though, that, I don't know what were my thoughts about this as a kid, but now that I'm older, yeah, I would immediately be pissed if my butler had hid this from me, and I would totally fire that butler now. I have a dark thought that I would just, just kill him. Just literally kill him for just keeping a secret like that. And I'm like trying to just be like, nope, I prefer to just fire him than kill him. I'm sorry, that's just a thought. Yeah, but just still, it's just it's just messed up for what the butler did. Like, that's just stupid of him. Well, no, remember when I said that I was annoyed with Eddie Brock um, in the movie? 
What was annoying about him was that he kept trying to pronounce everyone. He kept trying to pronounce that, you know, basically this. It's it's Brock, sir. Edward Brock Jr. Yeah, we get it. I thought it was supposed to be Eddie Brock. Is Eddie supposed to, is Edward supposed to be I, mean, I guess Eddie's short for Edward now that I think now that I think about it. And this has to be probably one of the stupidest lines he said uh, is Venom. I like being bad. It makes me happy. Like what the heck is that supposed to mean? And Harry Osborne. I could not believe he was killed off. He died the same way his father died, and I probably did cry as a kid. I honestly don't know. It's been like 14 years. Well, I mean, I've, I, I, I watch it every year, but like, it's been 14 years. I can remember how... Actually, well, it's been 14 years since the movie came out. I don't know what year I saw this movie, but by the time it would have came out, I would have been one years old. And my brother would have been born by 2007. Well, this movie came out, like, way before my brother was born, but and it, it came out on my brother's birth year, 2007. I was born in 2006. And I still, I got very upset, I got very upset when Harry, I was, when Harry died. That's basically Toby dying and trolling his friends of the Titans. But on a serious note, though, how the heck did, did, how, how did she end up going out with Eddie Brock? But I'll, how, when did she have the chance to dump him during the movie? Alright, now, back to Tazim. Also, here are some details I should point out. Uh, I have some thoughts about this. So, the way Peter gets bit by in the neck instead of the hand was very new, but mainly interesting. Like, because I, I mean, I remember you know just Spire bit, biting you on the hand, but like getting bit on the neck. Now that was that that got stuck in my hand. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. But seriously though, how the heck did Tom Holland Spider Man get bitten? Was it on the neck, or was it the hand, or somewhere else? Oh god. And there's this one part I did like what Flash Thompson did now. Flash Thompson, I, he's not a dislikable character. And he can be a jerk, but he's a cool character. And I probably either like um, Andrew Garvold's Flash Thompson version or Tom Holland's Flash Thompson. I don't know. It's either one. One of them is my favorite. I mean, I like Sam Raimi's version because he's the OG, of course. But when Flash tries to check on Peter and not be a bully to him, you know, just check out on him since he heard the news that his uncle was just murdered, you know, shot in the gut. I thought it was great for him to do because it showed how Flash Thompson isn't like a tonal jerk. And another thing, there's no organic webs this time. There, we have like actual comic accurate full Spider-Man with the web shooter things, but whether but or, organic webs or not, the web shooters were cool though. I did I did dug the web shooters, but it's more difficult for a Spider-Man since Toby had it all handled, you know, because like he didn't run out of webs. Well. I don't know, I mean, if all oh, you've seen Spider-Man 2, just... Yeah, I was like qu questioning, what the heck was going on? What the heck's going on with him? How is he losing his powers? Hey, I guess it's more fair that he would run out of webs or something. But back to Mark Webb's Gwen Stacy. She's alright, but the best part about her and Peter is the chemistry they have with each other. Now, I've heard people, uh, which would be Spider-Man fans, talk about... Uh, Andrew and Emma's is acting as Peter and Gwen, and I did not see what they meant about, you know, with their chemistry and everything. Like, I have trouble understanding with chemistry and all that, blah, 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 with movies and everything. But after re-watching Taza 1 and 2, oh my god, yeah, they ain't, ki they ain't kidding with the chemistry that Andrew and Emma have together as Peter and MJ. And Peter and Gwen! I meant to say Peter and Gwen. God, I'm such an idiot. Now my thoughts on the villain, the lizard. So... I probably would have wanted to have him look a bit comic accurate now, mainly with the lab coat. I know he's got wearing clothes and everything, but I mean, even close enough with it. I mean, 5% he was wearing the cloak, 95% he was, wasn't wearing anything throughout this entire movie, but he was still cool looking though. But he's not the best Spider-Man villain, but he's not a bad one either. He's honestly a cool Spider-Man villain in my opinion. And I liked how he didn't die in this one, since uh, in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies, all the villains kind of died. Well, accidentally died. Well, except for Sandman. But we'll find out how the heck he was killed off. Same goes for a lizard, since... How the heck were Sandman and Lizard killed off screen? Well, we'll find that out in two days. Two days till Spider-Man No Way Home. Life is real. But the only Spider-Man villains that had not died were Sandman, Lizard, including the Vulture, but from what I've known. But, like I said earlier... Both Sandman and the Lizard were killed off-screen in their universes, so... 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to find out how the heck that happened in Spider-Man No Way Home. But for the Vulture, he's doing alright in Morbius, which... What the hell is going on with Morbius? Man, it would have been cool to see if Sam Raimi's version of the Lizard would have ended up in this movie, because then we'd have four Raimi villains. But, either way, I'm excited to see that we're getting the Lizard back again for Spider-Man No Way Home. But honestly, the movie isn't perfect, but, I mean, it's almost perfect, because there's a lot of nitpicks I got for this movie. I mean, it's not loved by many fans. Like, here are my nitpicks I got. One, the Lizard's motive for this movie. His motive for this movie is kind of goofy or stupid, because he wants to turn the entire city into lizards, like... I thought it was interesting as a kid, but now that I think about it as a teenager... Like I said, it's either... It's either goofy or stupid. But another nitpick I got is that Peter eventually stops trying to find the man that murdered his uncle. Like, I badly want him to catch the dude, but put him in prison, not, like, beat the crap out of him. I mean, Tommy McGuire caught him, but didn't kill him, because the dude just tripped over and got himself killed, so that's on him. But there are a few deleted scenes for this movie that Sony should have never had those scenes cut out. Well, okay, well, maybe they should have some of them cut out. Not, like, all of them, but just some of them. Like, for example, there's this one deleted scene where the lizard just comes out of the bathroom and sees two girls chatting about something that I don't give a crap about, and the lizard just, like, just tries to lick their faces or something. I'm just like, no, 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 please stop, please stop, please stop. I just felt disturbed about it, but I'll now agree with everyone about one thing, and that is the homemade suit is the worst homemade suit ever made. I didn't give a crap about it as a kid, but now that I'm older, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now caving in. Yep, I'm now agreeing with everyone. But for the official suit, it looks good at night, looks terrible at daytime, but it's not a good suit, but it's not a bad suit either. I'd say it's a cool Spider-Man suit. But like, damn, why the heck does the head part look like a basketball? But like I said earlier, it's not a good suit, but it's not a bad suit either. It's just a cool suit in my opinion. A cool Spider-Man suit, but glad it, that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man got an improvement on the suit in Tasm 2. But what are my thoughts on Uncle Ben and Aunt May? Honestly, I think they're probably my most favorite versions of Uncle Ben and Aunt May. But I'm annoyed that they didn't have Uncle Ben say the famous lines to Peter, but glad they had someone to say it to Peter in a deleted scene for Tasm 2. But who says those lines to Peter? Peter's his dead dad. It happened to survive a plane crash. I posted a video about it on my community post, so don't know if you guys have seen it, but I, I'll be gladly to I'll gladly repost it again. But yeah, the person that says the famous lines "Great power, great responsibility" is Peter's dad that somehow survived a plane crash, since he does talk to Peter in a deleted scene, but is you know is speaking about Peter's dad. Let's say it's a deleted scene for Tazan too. We do get introduced to Pierce's parents, who we didn't see in Sam Raimi's universe, but I like how they introduced Pierce's parents in Amazing Spider-Man. Because I never bothered thinking about Pierce's parents at all, but this movie was being told as the untold story, and thanks to 3C Films' review, I now know what the untold story is, and I'm a bit mixed about it. But if all you don't know what it is, it has to do with, I guess, Pierce's dad experimenting on his son, because, uh, interesting detail in Tasm 2, the, 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 Richard Parker extracts his blood into the spiders, and that's, and basically just having Peter being destined to be Spider-Man. I don't know, I'm just 50-50 with it. I have mixed thoughts about it, but I want to say that Uncle Ben's death in this movie is a lot more sad than the one that we got from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man universe, because in Spider-Man, the last words that Uncle Ben said to Peter was, Peter, but in Tazem, Peter doesn't even hear Uncle Ben's last word. Like, his only last word was like, Hey! And tries to stop the dude, but... The dude just kills Uncle Ben. In the gut. Well, in the gut. With the gut. Still, what's more sad about it is that he doesn't get to hear his last words and just finds him already dead to the ground and just, yeah, basically Uncle Ben was already gone when Peter had gone there. Just... I find his death in this version a lot more sad than the other one from Spider-Man. You know, and... and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man universe, I mean. But I got more sad with the death of Captain Stacy. I don't know if I cried or not, but it was it was it was sad that Captain Stacy was killed thanks to the lizard's uh, three fingers. I now noticed that I, as a kid, I thought he had five, ten fingers, but then once he gets his hand shotgun by Captain Stacy, he has like uh, four fingers. But now after rewatching it, I now notice that he had always had just four fingers on his l right hand. I'm just like. How the hell have I not known 
one is that? Still, it was sad that he died in The Amazing Spider-Man, because now Peter has to promise Captain Stacy to leave Gwen out of this, and he, te he tells him, leave Gwen. Out of this. That was basically a promise. Well, <laughs> just wait till we uh, see that promise get broken. Well, be broken. In Tasm 2. I ain't ready for Tasm 2. But yeah, The Amazing Spider-Man may not be perfect, but it was not the worst Spider-Man movie. But I really enjoyed it and loved Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. So it may not be perfect, but it was still, it was still a good Spider-Man movie. And I would think it's almost amazing. But since I enjoyed The Amazing Spider-Man, I was all ready to see what they'd be doing in the sequel, which would be The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So I was I was all ready for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but just... <laughs> if I had a time machine, I'd, I'd use that to warn myself for what, for what would the worst to come for me, because I was not ready for Tasm 2. But those are just my thoughts on The Amazing Spider-Man. I know it's not beloved by all Spider-Man fans, and I'd be one of those people, but honestly... I, 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 I honestly can't hate on Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man movies. Not because um, he's passionate about it, but just they're Spider-Man movies. And I'm obsessed with Spider-Man. Like, I just don't think I'll ever hate a Spider-Man movie. I'll be probably disappointed, but I don't think I'll ever hate a Spider-Man movie. Just wait till I get to Tasm 2. But be sure to let me know your thoughts, comments down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next Spider-Man review. Peace out. But seriously, though, how the heck am I going to be able to catch up? I actually don't know how am I going to catch up, but what I'm mainly worried about... So if you spoil any spoilers and comes down below, I'm both some dirty guy. Anyways, peace. For real this time.